Khalil Roundtree delivered a devastating oblique kick last week in the UFC, leading to some ongoing debate about whether or not this kick is too dangerous and should actually be banned from the sport. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. In this video, we'll talk about the kick and the knee injury and then my opinion as a doctor as to whether or not I think this kick should be banned. Let's first take a look at the kick itself. As Bukowskis is stepping forward to deliver this jab, of course he steps forward with that lead leg and in order to help protect himself, limit the effectiveness of this punch, Roundtree delivers this oblique kick where he basically stomps directly into that knee on that lead leg. We can see right away the obvious deformity here is that knee collapses inward and of course the fight had to be stopped. As we look at the aerial view here, I want you to keep an eye on basically the position and the movement of that left knee relative to the rest of his lower leg. So here as he comes down, you can see that that left foot is clearly kind of rotated and pointed outwards and that knee is falling inward. So as Roundtree delivers this kick, that's going to put excessive load on particularly the ACL in the knee, but also some of those other ligaments that we'll talk about here in a minute. From this front on position, his MCL is the ligament that's running north-south on the inside of the knee, his LCL is the ligament here on the outside of the knee, and then his ACL and his PCL are gonna cross one another inside the knee. So as Roundtree delivers this kick, that position of the knee collapsing inward is going to stress both the MCL and the ACL in particular. This is a combination of kind of a valgus load coming from the outside where the knee is being pushed inward into a valgus position, but there's also this component of rotation about the knee which imparts more load on the ACL as well. But this is really one of the most important views because here we can see his foot is kind of pointed straight this way, the femur is down in like this, and that's going to cause that tibia to want to internally rotate putting more stress on the ACL. Unlike a low calf kick, where it's really this sudden, really brief burst of impact from the kick, what Roundtree does here is almost more of a continued push. So the initial contact here of his foot to Bukaskis' thigh really isn't doing anything. It's here as he continues to push that knee inward where you start to see the mechanism that's going to lead to the injury. So it's not so much a true kick as it is like a stomp and then a push that causes this to be such a devastating move. I don't think this kick should be banned for a number of reasons. The main argument for banning this kick is the potential to end a fighter's career. But in a sport where you're rewarded for causing brain trauma, it's hard to really balance an injury to a joint like the knee with strikes and impacts to the head that can not only end someone's career, but can end their life. There's a clear level of risk that fighters are accepting when they step into the octagon, and when they look at just purely what functionally affects them day to day, I can understand how they would value the function and health of their knee more than what might be harder to perceive immediately with the function of their brain. Also, when we're talking about potentially career-altering injuries to the peripheral joints, there's a lot of other things in the sport where you can cause just as bad of an injury. When Charles Oliveira applies this armbar to Tony Ferguson, He's trying to break his arm. He's trying to dislocate his shoulder, dislocate his elbow, which I could see an argument is going to be just as devastating to Ferguson's career as an oblique kick could be to Bukowskis' knee. Yet everybody praises the effectiveness of Oliveira's armbar technique and doesn't really say a word about it. Similarly, while a 6-12 to elbow is banned, everybody praises and raves about the knockout from Yuri Prohaska when he delivers this vicious spinning elbow to Dominic Reyes. When we talk about severity on a fighter's health and a fighter's life, this spinning elbow by Yuri Prohaska is so much more concerning to me than an oblique kick to somebody's knee. You could also make a case that Chris Weidman and Conor McGregor's leg injuries from repetitive low calf kicks can also be more damaging to not only their career, but just their functional daily life. But yet again, nobody talks about banning low calf kicks. It's tough because the sport is trying to balance situations where you're trying to induce injury and harm to your opponent with overall health and fighter safety. Now there are clearly some things that are almost too easy to do and can cause too severe of damage, like eye pokes, fish hooks kind of gouging at someone's mouth or their eyes, manipulation of small digits, like just grabbing someone's finger and trying to break it. To me, those being banned is equally the damage they can cause, but also how easy and how little skill they take to perform. Basically, there's no fight technique, yet there's serious danger. Despite the danger of Prohaska's spinning elbow, there's clear technique to this. Same with Oliveira's armbar on Tony Ferguson. This is a very dangerous position here that could ruin Ferguson's left arm, but 
There's technique, it's sort of part of fight technique. This is a technique Roundtree was trying to employ in the fight to reduce the effectiveness and confidence with Bukowskis coming forward with that jab. For him to deliver that jab, he's gonna step forward on that lead leg and for Roundtree to help protect it, he was throwing these oblique kicks earlier in the fight. If you start trying to compare the potential severity of all of these different fight techniques, you're gonna end up in this very confusing gray zone where you can't necessarily equate severity of one to the other. It's too easy to start taking this technique away, that technique away because of individual bad outcomes, and before you know it, you've completely altered just the way the sport has been going for so many years. Now that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be looking at different moves and overall fighter health to reevaluate things ongoing. Yes, an oblique kick can certainly end a fighter's career, but not in any different way that a low calf kick that causes a tibia fracture or a spinning elbow with major facial and eye trauma or even just repetitive concussions causing bad brain injury could also impact a fighter's career. At the end of the day, Bukaskis' injury, we're talking about ligaments, meniscus, cartilage, etc. And despite it coming from a different mechanism, it's really no different than the serious injuries we see in other sports. When fighters step into the octagon, they're accepting a level of risk that comes with being a mixed martial artist. And to me, the potential risk from an oblique kick is no different than a twister, a neck crank, an arm bar, or even just the repetitive brain trauma that can come from being knocked out. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know below your thoughts. Should it be banned? Do you think it's okay to keep going forward? Or are there other moves that you think should be banned or considered as well? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.